Hey guys, and how's it going? Always wanted a skid steer, so I bought one. I don't know if this was the greatest idea in the world, but <laughs> this is what I got. It's a mid 80s uh, Bobcat. I think it's a 642 is the number that is on it. It does not run. I have never worked on a skid steer. I've never even driven a skid steer before. So I figured I'd just jump in with both feet. Why not? <laughs> Getting on the trailer was a little bit easier because we had the winch and it does crank, but it just does not run. I was able to uh, spin it up and spin the motor and hold the hydraulics up to get the bucket up in the air a little bit. It has since relaxed and uh, let itself back down on the trailer. And it's definitely had some love, lack of love given to it over the course. I don't even think that's where the radiator is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be up top and somebody has cobbled that into there. There's wires hanging off things all over the place. I threw the uh, battery charger on it. It's been sitting on the trailer for oh, about a month or so. So I don't know if our best bet is trying to get it off the trailer first so we could open that door a little bit further or maybe even just kind of crank it forward. I'm not sure what's gonna be the best option for that. Actually, you might even be able to get it. If we drop this, this trailer drops on an angle like that when it goes down, I'll show you. It may get a, far enough away from the winch we, where we can open it. Well, let's continue to do a walk around. Tires hold air. That's about the best we can kind of say for them. They are in uh, pretty rough shape. And it looks like somebody like picked some of the good pieces off of here and put them maybe on another machine when they were having problems with it. If you notice, the rims don't even have the same offset. The one in the back is in about two or three inches compared to the one in the front. I went looking for wheels. They are six lug, which is kind of a weird size wheel pattern. The bucket is permanently welded on. <laughs> You're supposed to have quick connects, the two levers that you would flip and the bucket would come off. It's missing one on that side and this one they welded in the locked down position. And it definitely has looked like it's done a bunch of work in its life. It does have a uh, front uh, hydraulics extra auxiliaries missing the door that would be on the front of it and at least the hydraulics did work when we cranked it like I said it did lift the bucket up so there's that <laughs> other than that it's up to us to try to figure out how to get this thing up and running hopefully or and or figure out what happened to it the last two owners have not been able to get it running I think somebody bought or made a trade from somebody and then same happened to the next person and they kind of played with it a little bit and then this kind of gave up on it like I said, it does crank. It does sound like it has some compression. It may be just totally wore out on the engine side. Don't know. So, all right, we have our little show and tell. Let's go try to figure out how to get that opened up a little bit more and hopefully either get it off the trailer or maybe on dollies or something so we can go and work on it. Let's see if that'll do it for us. <laughs> Close. Better than what we had before, right? Let's go throw a bungee on that. I wish I could lift that door right off. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's blown a lot of soot all over the place. Trying to see where the exhaust comes in. Well, that'll not be very good right to begin with because there's the muffler and that usually should come up and out there that's not happening it's got a little three-cylinder Kubota that's in it yeah somebody's made a fan shroud around that radiator it's like somebody plasma cut a hole out here things li live a rough life too you know they work so hard and a lot of times you don't get the love that they should so like I said it does crank I don't know if even that's the original engine for it. I'm seeing like motor mounts on the bottom that are hacked out of something. Look like they tried to, maybe they did that to get the, uh, this piece of plumbing from a house <laughs> on there. Yeah, let's uh, pop that oil stick out real quick, see if there's anything in it. Yeah, the, uh, there's like gauges and controls above the seating area. And they're all like written in with white marker. At least there's something happening here. Seemed kind of high on the stick, didn't it? I can tell this isn't factory either. Let's go get ourselves in there. 
<laughs> Is this how it's gonna go? So it's way, way overfilled. I don't know if that would be diesel maybe going into the crankcase. Yeah, we're supposed to be there. We're up here somewhere. All right, we'll kind of keep that in mind. And let's go up front and give ourselves a little crank. See if we can get the bucket up. I like to get it off the trailer if we can, just give a little bit better access to kind of move around. We're going in. Seat deli has seen better days. So that's your steering left and right. Those two rods that are there, and then the pedals down below are going to be your uh, controls for the bucket, I believe. Let's get herself in here. Hopefully, that seat's not full of water. All right. This bar drops down. Twenty seven hundred hours on it is what that says. And like I said, it looks like a whole bunch of stuff just been yanked and disconnected and wires hanging off of different things and who knows, like it was a CB that was here. And somebody wrote non-existent wipers, that's that switch there. Lights, there's no lights on it. Alright, so that here's what cranks it is this key right here. Let's give it a listen. Fuel pump works. <laughs> Sounds good, huh? Let's um, see if we can get that bucket to go up for us. And I forget which one it was, which pedal. So we'll just kind of wiggle one and see what happens. There it goes. Try the other one. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, about this one. I think that's just curl in the bucket. I'm trying to get the one that lifts it. That's why it's lifting the front of the machine off the ground. So I'm like standing real hard back on both pedals, and it seems like. Now should go. So I'm gonna go get myself out of here and hopefully try to get the battery charge disconnected and try to pull the trailer back a little bit. Give us a little bit of room so you could get it off the trailer and get the trailer out of the garage. I don't know if we got enough battery to get us cranked off of here and the other part is I got to be able to turn that key at the same time pushing both of those levers forward to get it go off the trailer <laughs> so how are we going to accomplish that I don't know I got a yardstick I wonder maybe if we can uh, maybe like jam it ever get the feeling this is like a bad idea jam both of them forward <laughs> crank the key and hopefully it doesn't start. <laughs> Take out the bus. Let's go try to get that all set up. See how it works. Something like one-handed like that. I just gotta figure out how to mount you guys with the camera. That's why women live longer than men, right? All right so let's just give her a crank. See if we'll even move forward right now where I got a position. Please don't start. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
At least you know it moves, right? That should be easier to work around. Definitely marked its spot though. Remember where it's sitting on the trail, it's all kind of covered in oil. Think we're gonna overtax them? Two more, we'll see if he does a spin around. And my guess is about 6,000 pounds it weighs. Maybe a little more. It'll go. Good. I'm gonna sweep the floor out and try to spin it around so that the engine bay is facing towards where the tools are to make our life a little easier. Well, there you go. Looks like we got an office job. Somebody even hooked me up with some new wheels for my buggy. I don't get stuck in the cracks anymore like skateboard wheels. All right, so we've got to kind of educate ourselves on you know what's happening here and wh whoever did what to it to make it <laughs> how, it, how it looks. I see like somebody did a bunch of different wiring. All that's got all new ends made on it. So someone's been through this kind of cobble and stuff together. You know, one hanging off here, another one hanging. Those two seem to be hooked up. That one seems to be hooked up. I know what we have for throttle. One should be throttle and one should be like a, um, a uh, throttle shut off on the injection pump. You can see behind that what we have happening. And also when we were cranking it, it seemed like the fuel pump was running all the time. And I would think that it would build up pressure and stop like regular pumps. That may or may not be the case. It'd be finding it funny if it's just out of fuel. That little strip up there, that is for glow plugs. So there should be something that uh, energizes that wire and glows a set of plugs that are in there that heat the intake, the compression, the uh, cylinder up to help it kind of get fired off. And I don't even remember seeing a switch up front for that, but th this warm temperature really shouldn't need it. We're 70 degrees. I'm trying to figure out where the fuel pump itself is. I see the fuel filter in the back. I don't see a pump yet though. Looks like it's got a, a plug for uh, almost like a block here. Get the light back on. Yeah, why don't we hide? It looks like right here they have, should be like a plug end on it. Yeah, that's just for winter time. It probably is uh, heating the cooling system. Would that make it a heating system? All right, let's uh, also figure out on the starter. Maybe we can get a starter button hooked up to it so we can kind of crank it from back here and you know, probe around and see what we have. Again, we're just trying to educate ourselves. starter is there. Yeah, let me go ahead and get some jumper wires on this and see if we can get it to crank from there. It does not have a wire. It looks like an oil pressure switch is missing a wire on that. And then we'll look for a fuel pump. It's just a, a um, remote start button. And all it does is connect that wire to that wire when you hit the button. So one side is going to get connected to the uh, positive of the battery. And I see two probes, uh, two outputs on that uh, starter. And we'll click one on the one and we'll see if it does anything. When we hit the button, we'll try the other. I don't even know if they need both, not quite sure. So let's uh, poke and hope. Not sure what you can or can't see. I'm gonna go try that one right there. Get on me. There you go. I see the anything. Nothing. Alright, let's go. Look at it. I don't know if you guys can see around the oil filter. I'm looking at this orange wire right here. Let's see if we can get kind of come out there with a little probe or something. I'm gonna try just holding it against it, see if that's it first, and then I'll hit the button. Yeah. There we 
go. All right, let's go get that locked on. I don't think the key position really should matter. I don't think it has any other kind of kill, except for like a mechanical kill. Maybe the key would be for charging, but that's about it. Actually, the key turns on the electric fuel pump. Maybe we can follow the noise and see. That is it back there. So right there. A little aftermarket pump. What if we have a bleeder or something we can open up? Yeah, right there. Let's try getting a wrench on that. We'll crack that, see if we get any fuel coming out of it. Actually, be kind of nice if we didn't get anything. What's that hanging? What's that do? <laughs> Make a noise difference, yeah. But we got fuel. I wouldn't call that much kind of pressure at all, though, huh? Mm, pisses out, but not much. I wonder if um, we can take some of this intake boot off of there. You know, maybe we'll give her a little spray and see if it wants to try to do anything. I started popping the intake off, and if you can see it, it literally poured, but it looked like fuel out of the air cleaner. Yeah, it's got oil up in the air cleaner. So what's up with that? That's kind of a, you can see it in there now. Oil, water, both, neither. Hmm, I'm gonna explain why the uh, oil was so full. Hey, now we got that out of the way, you can see ourselves a little better in here. And it looks like, so this was probably an electric shut off on this lever and then they went and they put a cable on it and they're just doing it manually to shut it down. So and this will be our throttle. I figure that's probably idle. And it's a little bit of throttle. Let's uh, spray, the intake is right there, the hole. Let's go see if I have any startup fluid. We'll give it a little shot in there. We'll give her a crank and see if it tries to do anything. I also don't think it'll matter what position this is in. I think it just chokes off the fuel, but if we're putting our own in, where's the crank button? Let's give that a shot. Give it another shot. Maybe we'll try the glow plugs. Put a little bit of heat in it, see if it helps it. it does sound like it's skipping on a cylinder though, doesn't it? And our battery's going away. Alright, I'm gonna go throw the charger on it and uh, maybe we'll look into those glow plugs. I apologize for the hum. We don't have a choice. So I, I want to kind of just see if we have glow plugs working at all, if any of them work. So I got a test light, one end's hooked to power and anything I touch on the body should light the light up. You know, saying that it's ground. So although there's a filament in there, if I touch that strip, it should light up. There it goes. That meaning that the little coils that are in there are connected and going down to ground. The wire is still kind of connected too, but um, that's, that's a good sign, at least one of them is possibly working. So let's go make a jumper wire up from the hot side of the battery to power this strip up and we'll kind of let it cook a little bit. Then we'll give it another try. I think it's like one side to positive. And it should kind of even spark a little bit too. They draw, yeah they are. Okay, so let's um, find where my crank button is. I'm not gonna give it any more ether yet. We're just gonna throw a little heat in it. We'll glow them for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. My feeling is, my guess is that the engine's tired and they just weren't able to get it to start. That's just a guess on my part right now. Even like listening to it, like it, it doesn't have, sounds like one of the cylinders when it goes to crank it, doesn't have the same amount of compression. All right, let's give that a shot. Shot and we'll try glowing it again. That wire's cooking in my hand. And we're out of ether. One last Yahoo. Can I do that? 
клавам. I'm hoping for a fuel problem, but again, just don't know. All right, you ready? Let's uh, turn the key on so the fuel pump's running. So if there is injectors doing something, they'll do it. I figured that's just a pump that kind of feeds a larger pump though. Next thing we're gonna try, we're gonna try cracking one of the lines to see if we get anything going to the injectors. But let's um, glow it one more time. Here, the battery charger bogged down when I hook it up. They're like, think like your toaster, the little wires inside your toaster that light up. That's pretty much, they look something like a spark plug on the other end, but that's what's in them. And the diesel doesn't fire off of a spark plug. It dials, it fires off of compressed air that gets really hot when it squeezes the air. All right, let's push up. But if your compression is too low, it'll never make enough heat to be able to fire it. All right, let's go get a wrench. We'll throw it on one of the lines here. We'll crack one of them loose and we'll see if we get any fluid coming out of them. Let's see what happens. Still should have kind of fired on that ether too though, even if it didn't have any fuel. It should have kind of tried to run on that. All right, let's give her another crank, see what it does. It'll only, it'll only do something when it's cranking too. Can you see? Get it right off of there. It's kind of like wet, but it, it, you know, that's supposed to be a lot. It's supposed to have a, a good kick behind it. It doesn't have anything. Didn't get you in there. I thought doing what it should. Kind of in a way I like. <laughs> um, you could do a compression test on them. I don't know if we want to get into that part of it yet. I wonder what else we can kind of go check. We know we got fuel going in there. I wonder if, I don't know if we just have to bleed the system. And I also kind of wonder if that shut off that we were talking about, that electric one, is in the right or the wrong position. You know, that cable operated. I would think that you would pull it to shut it off that, wouldn't you? Okay, that's just a guess. I'm just gonna try it one more time with that lever in a different position. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna go probe around a little bit, see if I can find anything that's going on with the fuel system. If you have places that we could either like crack a bleeder open and see if we can get anything coming out of where the pump is, maybe like right down there. See anything? All right, I'll bring it back. I got rid of the rest of the air hose. You can kind of see better on what's going on. Let's take the uh, fuel line that's going to it right off. We'll stick it in a jar. We'll turn the key on. Just see what kind of flow we got, what the fuel looks like, that kind of thing. I put the line off. It doesn't look terribly dirty. Let's go give a... Uh, Turn the key on for a second and see what we get for flow. Yeah. Kind of chugged something kind of weird there, didn't it? A little bit. Yeah, that's decent. Hmm. Yeah. 
I can get enough fuel to it, and then it has to have its own pump that that generates pressure to a high pressure. That's just more of a uh, like a lift pump going to it. Uh, this fan shroud radiator looking debacle. <laughs> I wonder if maybe we just get all this crap out of our way. We get a little bit better view to what it is. Who knows if there's even any coolant in it. There's an overflow bottle here. Yeah, it's got nothing in it. Let's go. see much of anything a little bit of wetness on top so let's uh drain that down maybe we can get this crap out of our way and uh, we're probably gonna want to go clean that mess up anyway in, in the long run but let's get out of our way it gives us best better access to the pump and all and yeah, even just for filming we can kind of get on there and see what we're doing yeah we're looking for a lower radiator to see what it had yeah, it looks like it's got this is a bracket and a bracket holding the radiator they sandwiched it between the original one with this piece of metal that's bowed and just bolted this upper piece and this lower piece like two bananas go get on it going across like that and it's just sandwiched in between there so i can get them off and i think we got to kind of deal with that plumbing on the side there to try to figure out how to get fluid out of it oh boy i think we got the bolts out of the makeshift shroud Whoa! Coolant. <laughs> First, I thought it was oil. Yeah, so let's go tuck that back up into herself. It's a good sign. All right, let me go see if we can find like a, a valve or something under the radiator that we can open and drain it. I think it's just stuck on the lower hose right now. piss everywhere. Let's see if we can do a controlled dribble. Really? <laughs> well, at least the fluid looks good. No oil in it. That's out of our way. I don't know if that's the factory radiator. Like maybe the it just I don't, it just really cobbled together to try to get that where it is. Getting that out of our way, and uh, now we can see a little bit better. <sighs> yep. Well, before I decided to polish the floor, I was trying to get the button out so I can crank it over and just get whatever was out of the system. You know, the water pump maybe push a little. Let's go see how that works. <laughs> kind of a mute point now. Yeah, nothing. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we went to go crank. It was going to go catch us in the uh, plums. Looking back in the cab, I see this lever here. That's that cable that they added. So I don't know if that would be shut off or that would be shut off. So we're going to go try it in both positions. I'm going to say, like, I don't know, maybe that's run and that's off. We'll, we'll just pick one. And what we're going to do, we'll crank it again. I'll get the electric fuel pump on and we'll see if we get anything going to that injector line. Yeah, she's cranking again. Let's uh, find our button where that ended up. There it is. And that that is still off of there. Can we pull that up a little so we can get a better visual? Just a hair. Yeah, here. So that's that's with that one all the way cracked open. get a little cup underneath there we can see what kind of volume we're getting out of that I mean it shouldn't be a, a ton you know but it's hard to tell everything's just so wet I found a uh, eight millimeter socket hiding underneath the fan let's go crack it. that whole line loose I'm gonna see if I can get that line you know, we'll, we'll pivot it out here a little bit I'm not fighting it I have a feeling we're going to be pulling one of those injectors anyway, so. I 
I might have it there. I'm gonna have to drop it. There we go. Yeah, I should be able to take that line. Loosen it up, we'll, we'll spin it out here somewhere. I'm gonna blow through that real quick, make sure nothing's clogged. I doubt it, but you never know. Now it's, it's open. I must say, the antifreeze smells better than the diesel. Tastes better too. I don't think either one's good for you. There, there we go. Right, let's go see if we can get the pee out of that line. Can you see? Let me get this set up a little better. Look at the throttle about halfway up too. pressure out of it. Seems to. Hmm. I don't know, I'm gonna hook it back up. Now we can kind of get in there a little bit. Maybe we'll try um, priming it a little. I think we're gonna have to, uh, maybe we'll pop the valve cover off. It just, it doesn't sound right to me. It sounds like it, one cylinder's got compression and the other one's Aren't doing much. That's just a guess, but what's your thoughts? I'll probably about the valve cover off too and check, and check the valve. I would think we'd have a little bit more fuel pressure than that, but like I said, probably the next thing would be is a, see if we can take an injector out and put an injector to the side and see if there's enough pressure there to overcome the injector. But having said all that, I would think that if we prime, like we, if we, uh, I think that intake with starter fluid, it, it should kick. It should at least try to run on that. Even if there was no fuel system on it, you know? So, I kind of think there's other issues on top. Back you up a little bit. All right, let's see if we go fog it. So if we need to kill this thing, pull this back, and this back. Hopefully they both go. Worst case, we could shove a rag on the intake and get in there. think it we just just doesn't have enough compression to fire uh let's get that valve cover off and we, we'll check valve clearances we'll make sure we don't have any tight valves and also we'll kind of see if everything's kind of doing what it should do in there let's blow some of that crap off before we little pine needles and crap around the valve cover as you get the, the brake free Let's um, do a little probe. Not that kind of probe. Let's go just like kind of, that's got excess. That's got decent excess. That one's already down. That one's got play. It seems like they all have a, so this one and this one we have to check. Let's uh, bump it over a little. That one's fine. 
on its fine. So they all got play. <laughs> got a lot of blow by. All that you see coming out of there, that's the compression leaking around the rings and going down to the bottom of the cylinder. And it, then it comes out like the, cr the crankcase. <laughs> I think we're starting to find what our problem is. Fortunately, I kind of paid around what you would pay for one that needs a motor. Maybe a little too much. <laughs> uh, I'm not confirming that yet. Let's, um, hmm. I did buy a compression tester for diesel. I've never used it. And uh, maybe now is a good time to try to figure out how it works. Huh? Yeah, let's see what we got. Like some of those valve adjustments are like, that's a lot. That's like 80 thou. Yeah, so I don't know what these would be, but normally on, say a regular engine, a gas engine, I should say, uh, 10 thou would be like a normal valve adjustment. That's just ridiculous amount. I wonder if it overheated. And then like later on, they tried up. Uh, whatever radiator they put on it or the radiator failed and they were running it and again I'm just hypothesizing is that a word and then they started putting that shield and all that crap around it and it just went to the point where it was dead <laughs> uh let's uh like I said let's see what we can do when we get the uh box with the uh compression tester on it to see if it gives us any kind of heads up of what to do I knew this would come in handy someday I don't think I've ever even opened the box yet Looky, looky. Yeah, it's like we just take the injector out and then we thread in whatever one that kind of fits down inside the orifice. And then the PSI should be fairly high. It's not like a gas engine. Gas engine is like, you know, 100 to like 175 PSI. These are going to be much greater than that. I don't know if it tells us anywhere we should see. I'm sure, we could probably look it up, but. Does it say Kubota on there anywhere? Kubota right there. Some models. 10 times 125 with the F adapter. Do they say what letters on them? What good is that? There you go. F is going to be that. That one? We'll figure it out. Let's get an injector out. I got the fuel rail off of there. Let's see if we can get one of the injectors to come out. Not a great fit. There it goes. Good. And we can eyeball what size that thread is. And that's our injector. You guys look like you got a sty in your eyeball. You go clean your lens. So we need something that looks like that to thread in. I'm gonna try that one. It's a little small, don't it? Skinny wise. Hope we got something. Suck if not. That's too big. Alright, we we'll go shove something in the hole, see if it fits. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that fits. Gotta wonder if that's the same thread. I don't mind cannibalizing one if we have to, you know, cut it. This is too fat. That's too skinny. I think I'm going to go on across. Hmm. We have a spare injector from something. We could probably cannibalize one of them and, and make one, you know. I'm going to hit this on a wire reel real quick, real quick, real quick, and just see if this kind of comes apart in any fashion that we can use it. Hey, you want to see what the inside of an injector, injector looks like anyway, right? Let's see if we can get the compressor ring off of it. Let's try to go around it. There it goes. There might be a big spring in there. That's that part of it. It just essentially has a little check valve on the other end. Right. Let's 
put all that back together. And hopefully we have something that can thread into that. Maybe, kinda. That's not looking very good either. I don't see anything that's, that has anywhere near that size. It's gonna fight us every inch of the way, isn't it? <laughs> oh well. I'm gonna go probe around a little bit, see if we can see if we can come up with something that will uh, function for us. Desperate times, different, desperate measures. I'm gonna try crushing that into the other one a little bit. See if it'll go. <laughs> I could run some solder around it. What do you think the chances are that'll stay together? <laughs> Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Well, she's a tad cobble, cobbled together, and hopefully it stays together. Let's go see what we get. Hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, if that was a gas engine, it'd be okay. I don't think it'd be too good for a diesel, though. Let's go do the other two. And number two. Keep it out of the fan. Forty. <laughs> yeah. I know it didn't sound great. And our last victim. What's your bets? I'm gonna say one of them sound like they were kicking with a little bit, but it's probably that one that's got 120. I'm gonna say this one's probably got like 40 also. Yeah, 100. None of that is gonna be good enough for a diesel to run. We found our problem. The injector pump looks like it's working okay there. You can see that kind of, they're shooting like they should. <laughs> ha! All right, let me go gather my thoughts. Hey, a little asking of Google there. 275 to 400 is really kind of what we should be seeing. And, you know, fairly even across them. That's unfortunately just not enough to generate enough heat to burn the fuel. If it got spinning up, if, like you, if you were able to get it fired, once it was running, it would probably stay running just because of the speed up at the compression actually kind of, you know, you're, you're cranking it at, yeah, what are we doing? 200 RPM maybe. And once you get it running, you bring it up to about seven or 800 RPM. It probably goes so fast it's able to stay running, but once you shut it off, forget it. It's not gonna uh, be able to survive. So that is why it got retired because it's a pile. <laughs> uh, I gotta go look up what diesel it is. I don't know if they, it would be better for us to try to get a rebuild kit, try to find another engine that's together. And you know, one of those ran when pulled, you know, those come out, right? I'm like, well, why did you pull it out if it ran fine? Ah, uh, repowering it, I don't know, put a Volkswagen engine in it. <laughs> but at least we know, like we cranked it, the hydraulics worked for the bucket going up and down and the hydraulics worked forward and reverse on the wheels. So at least it does have that part of it. I'm trying to make it sound better for myself. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go from here. I don't know how much time it's going to get me to go find something. If you guys see something, you know, when the video first comes out after a while, I would have already got it figured out or sold it to the next person. <laughs> All right, guys, unfortunately, it's going to be on a shorter one. I was kind of hoping to get further along with this and do some more repairs, but uh, you saw what I ran into. I don't have an engine, I don't think. <laughs> all right, guys, stop buying cheap junk, bring it home. That's the answer. But that, guys, I'm going to thank you all for hanging out, having a little bit of fun, trying to educate myself and maybe educate you guys along how things work a little bit. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Till then, later. Yeah, but look at the bright side. It's off my trailer. <laughs> I can drag more junk home. So just a little bit more thinking about it. So it's got blow by, so it's gonna be rings and pistons and sleeves are what the issue is. So I don't know if they make, I don't know if it's a wet sleeve. Wet sleeve is a, the cylinder comes out of the block and you're able to replace it with uh, new pistons and new rings. That, I have a feeling the head is kind of beat to the fact that the uh, 
gap was so large i have a feeling that something might be happening inside there too it just that or just no maybe it's yeah the valve cover's probably never been off the whole 2600 hours it ran plot twist you ready <laughs> some things start to reveal themselves so i started doing a little bit of homework just trying to figure out you know what engine that would be and i started looking up try to find a tag anywhere on the engine i don't see anything and of course it has a, the only tag that i see on it is this one and we thought it was a uh, 642b or 641 not sure i kind of looked all these up and um, they do have different engines that are in them any of you guys guessing <laughs> torchin on here that funky radiator setup that was on there that homemade linkage that homemade linkage all the wires that fuel pump up there that is just kind of hanging by one bracket not looking factory on the 642 came with a four-cylinder ford gas engine diesel diesel gas so i think this one was originally equipped with a gas engine somebody went through all this cobbling and fit in the, like even this isn't factory welding here on this aluminum plate down here they modified it to get a diesel in there I don't, and I don't even know what it is my guess is a Kubota and I, I would kind of think maybe the most popular stuff is like something out of a, a reefer unit a uh, refrigerator truck trailer that runs that and it would have been like 28 horsepower I think the gas engine that would have been in here would have been like a 32 horse any of those are fine but yeah that's starting to explain some things even like the gas cap I looked at it you would think if it said if it had diesel it would say diesel on the gas cap and it just doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything. You know? Also, like the uh, the shut off had a uh, aftermarket cable set up hooked to it on the lever down there. That's not correct. And then looks like they ran a big heavy red wire going up there. That was probably for the glow plugs to get them to work. So it's starting to make a little bit of sense. I don't know. An air cool VW engine is starting to look better and better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gifts keep on coming don't they the hits whatever you want to call it all right with that now i gotta do some more homework try to figure out i still wouldn't mind trying to fix this one if i can access parts and figure out what it is but uh until i do that i'm not gonna have any kind of answers all right bye did you really think i wouldn't have one an old generator up in here just looking to see what setup this diesel is it's got a three-cylinder Kubota in it looks like the intake is totally different on it and I don't know what the coupler would be on the inside he's running an old Onan where's the radiator in this thing it's got 581 hours on it Hmm. Thirty by twenty-six. Little marine diesel ran good, but I think it was only like twelve horsepower. Oh, you piece of crap. Give you a good deal on it. <laughs>